several people later on in the, in the official part of the meeting, but, uh, but let me just say thank you to all of you for uh, all the support that you provided to me personally and to the Mississauga Arts Council over, over the, the numerous years of our involvement in the, in the Arts Council. Um, Ars Longo Vita Brevis. Ars Longo Vita Brevis is a great Latin expression that I'd like you to think about. What it essentially says is art is long, life is short. And it speaks to the enduring nature of what we see around this room about art and it's uh, and it, the people that creative and, uh, and appreciate it and collect it and curate it. And it's not just for years. Art is for generations. It's how we leave our memories for the future. Ars longo vita brevis. Please think about that. The mission of the Mississauga Arts Council for the past several years has been connect, create, and celebrate. Connections, as Mike was kind to say, and community building has been my personal passion for the last several years. And many of you have come and been bored by some of my speeches on community and the power of co and social capital. It's part of a part-time DBA that I've been doing, and it's something that I'm really passionate about, and it's something that I think the Mississauga Arts Council has lived by. What we've been doing is we've been bringing We've been working hard at bringing artists and promoters, buyers and producers, the creators and the appreciators of arts together. Many of you are here tonight and I encourage you to connect tonight. And if you're interested afterwards, we may go to Cook Lane's pub and a little bit of a after party if you're interested for an open mic. Because that's what arts and supporting the arts is all about. Having fun together, enjoying some creative art and connecting and helping people in the future. Celebrate is number two. The Marty's every year, and this year on May 10th, as uh, the mayor said, is all about a celebration of the arts. And I encourage you all to come out and see our emerging and established nominees and winners. Uh, someone today just told me that they won an international award for non for profit of the year, and so congratulations uh, for you uh, uh, for that. And it is. And, and, and then she also told me that while well, she was very proud of that, she was very disappointed that I introduced her to Sab, and she said, Sab was supposed to be my daughter on, it didn't work out. So with every good thing, there's a... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sora Sabera. Um, I've had the privilege of making over 20 speeches in the city over the last couple of years, talking about, uh, about uh, the importance of the arts, and, and my line is being, what we celebrate, we become. And I really believe that if we celebrate um, our artists will, will become a very artistic city. If we celebrate sports, we're going to become a very sports-oriented city. So I encourage us all to think about uh, celebration. And as Mike mentioned, and uh, Charles will tell you in a little bit more detail later, I'd like to celebrate a little bit because last year, the last two years, uh, with uh, Ron's help uh, producing the Martys, we've had the two most successful Martys in history. And with Mike's uh, help and uh, a whole bunch of other people, we've had the two most successful Dallas in history, and as Charles is going to tell you, we almost made $30,000 last year, so I think we need to celebrate financial success as well as our business. But tonight, and Mike, I promise you, seven years, it's only seven minutes, so it's a minute a year, okay? I apologize. I'm hopefully going to go to number three, because I think number three is actually most important. It's inspirational, I think it's aspirational, and that is create and creativity. And the mayor mentioned creativity, and uh, Deepika, you mentioned uh, creativity in, uh, in vibrant downtowns. I really think that's the most important. I want you to think about it for a second, uh, if you could. Uh, point number one, in my cluster studies, I've been very influenced by the work of Richard Florida. Many of you may have heard of Richard Florida, probably the most uh, uh, prolific author and professor in Canada today. He talks about how the creative class is the key to success for prosperity in the future. And if we can't attract the creative class to our cities, we're going to be dead. He argues that if we want our cities to prosper, we need to welcome and encourage and be the catalyst for creative people and creativity. Creativity not just in the arts, but also in engineering, fashion, biotech, IT, design, fashion, etc. He says the commodity economy is over, the resource economy is over, it's all about the experience economy and creativity. Many of you, most of you in this room live that, and I think will agree to it. He says, though, it's interesting, we need to welcome diverse people and ensure that they feel included, that inclusion is the key, that everyone is welcome, no matter what race, what color, what genre of music, what type of dance that they may be interested in. I'm looking at some hip-hop dancers. Uh, that's key. He says we need to create the opportunities to bump into each other, and it's that catalytical impact that is key. 
He says we need to sponsor, fund, and buy art and creative products. He challenges us to support it financially as well as with our promotional support. Number two, last year I attended a speech by the governor, past governor of the Bank of Canada, David Dodge. Boring economist, even he stressed creativity. Let me tell you what he said. We live in an incredible area of innovation here in the GTA, but we need to push it a lot more. We shouldn't be free, we shouldn't be afraid of challenge, free speech, and true democracy. We need to channel our efforts into generating more creativity. It's our secret. Working in teams is critical, challenging each other, focusing on the arts, engineering, great design. We're finally beginning to see it, and the future generations will be those that harness this catalytic power and unleash the, their true creative potential. I can't wait. That's a boring economist. And number three, we just started, uh, and one of the, my disappointments in leaving is I'm not going to be able to continue it, but we've just started a big effort on arts and mental health. And uh, the benefits of art and creativity are something that I think has been really stressed only of late. The United Kingdom has a fascinating initiative you may have heard about called social prescribing, which is about the health benefits of both social interaction and creativity. Some artistic involvement has been proven to be critical for people with mild to moderate depression stemming their progression without that uh, interaction, which would go to full depression when only drugs might help. The key, according to the UK Minister of Health, is that, get this, art allows you to express yourself when words don't work anymore. I thought that was beautiful. Art allows you to express yourself when words don't work anymore, whether it's visual art or dance or song or whatever. And creativity, he says, is the catalyst to see your way out of your problems. Depressed people see only one route. They get stuck in a rut. Creative people see many and can get out of their rut. I'd like to introduce you to, if I could, Dr. Eva Anchek, who is here in the front row. She's just launching an effort in this regard. Stand up. She's just launching a, an effort in this regard. On April the 21st, on April the 21st, she's launching a program called Ideal Me for teens, which she teaches positive self-image, confidence, and creative thinking. I think we need a lot more of that. If you want to hear more information about it, please talk to Eva later on. Thank you. And then number four, if I could, one of my favorite books is by the co-founder of Pixar, called Creativity. As some of you may know, my very first job after I graduated from my MBA was with Disney, and Pixar and Disney ended up merging. So I've always been inspired by movies, animated films, amusement parks, uh, and entertainment, and that's one of the reasons why I got involved in uh, Mac. And I won't bore you with all of their lessons, but I'd like to leave you with four quick ones if I could, because I think they're very telling and inspirational. Number one, he says great people are more important than ideas. He says if you give good ideas to a mediocre team, they'll screw it up. If you give a mediocre idea to a brilliant team, they'll either fix it or throw it out and come back with something better. He says getting the right people and the right chemistry in the room and the board or the organization, you hearing that, Grant? is more important than getting the idea right. Number two, he says you gotta give feedback. Feedback, criticism, constructive criticism is key. He calls it good notes. Every Friday, Pixar got together and had what they called good note sessions. Good notes, though, he says, we're all about what is wrong, what is missing, what isn't clear, and what makes sense. They don't make demands, and they don't necessarily propose a fix. They leave the fix up to the producer or the creative director. <clears throat> Most of all, they're very specific about the mistakes. Most importantly, he says, they focus on the problems, not the person. He says, when criticizing an idea, always shift the emphasis off of the person or the source and onto the idea itself. I thought that was interesting. Number three, he talks about the collisions that are, that are, that are critical in the creative process. He said that creativity is equal to the unexpected connections between unrelated concepts, peoples, and ideas. Some refer to this, and I, if you come to my, some of my speeches, I refer to it as idea sex. And I think that's really an interesting way to think about it. In my Power of Coast speech, I stress the importance of collisions and coincidences, and I quote Einstein, and think about this. Einstein said, coincidences in life are God's way of staying anonymous. Finally, he talked about the power of postmortems, evaluating things after the fact. And he said, companies like individuals don't become exceptional by believing they are exceptional, but by understanding the ways in which they're not. The Greeks said, we suffer our way to wisdom. So when you've got challenges, when you've got problems, that's a way to learn and become better. 
So I'd like to close by doing a little post-mortem on the Mississauga Arts Council and my seven years with the Arts Council. Number one, because I think that hopefully those of you that are continuing with the Arts Council might be able to benefit from some of my uh, conclusions. And then also because it's a way of me thanking people. As Mike said, I've been with Mac for seven years, which is a long time. Three years as a vice president and two as president. And I have to tell you, it's very sad to leave. But new blood is key and change is good. I've had the privilege of working with closely two different mayors, and both of those mayors have been incredibly supportive of the arts, and I think that we need to thank them, both, both Hazel McCallion and Bonnie Crombie, for their support of the arts, both coming to events, the parties, the galas, etc., and encouraging the arts. I've had the privilege of working with two other great presidents, Bowden and I. We didn't know we see eye to eye, as some of you know, but I think that that constructive debate was actually really helpful and I'm convinced that the decisions that came out of that were, were a lot better in the end. I've worked with three executive directors. Linda Thomas was excellent. She knew everyone and helped every artist that she uh, ever met in Mississauga. Mike Douglas is one of the most organized and hard-driving people I've ever met. It's been a pleasure working with Bowden, Ken, Linda, and Mike. I have served with excellent board members. I can't mention all of them, and numerous of you here that I'm not going to mention, I apologize about that, but I want to draw on four if I could, because I think there's a lesson in the four I want to personally thank. Some of you will know them, some of you might not, but one of them is Dita. You'll remember Dita. Dita came to every meeting, she wasn't the treasurer, she came to every meeting doing her homework, having questions on the finances. You want a good member, board member, find someone like Dita that's going to do her homework and come with lots of questions. Uh, asthma. Asthma had a conflict. Asthma was head of a festival, but she was the most passionate person for artists and festivals. She came with an agenda, she came with an outlook. Having someone that cared so desperately on the board was incredibly helpful and I valued her input immensely. Grant. Grant was always there in good times or tough times. Grant, thank you so much for all of your support over the years. You're amazing. And Ron. Ron stepped in as executive producer, volunteer executive producer, produced incredible Martys, volunteer people that are creative geniuses and incredibly well organized, they're worth their weight in gold. Thank you. So I've given you four suggestions of great board members. People that do their homework, people that are incredibly creative, people that can produce great things, people that care, and people that are there in good times and bad. You put those people together, you'll have a great board, you'll have a great council, you'll have a great organization. Those are my suggestions. But I gotta tell you, the biggest reward of my time on Mac has been the incredible Mac people that I've met and gotten to know, and as president, frankly, gotten to know really well because they've invited me to event after event after event, and that's been one of my biggest pleasures. Some of you will know these names, please let me say them. Gil, Gil, who always had time to sit down and tell me about the things that we needed to build in Mississauga and say, you know what Mississauga needs? More rock and roll. If he told me that six times, he probably told me it ten times. Joey and Patty, who judged and organized and inspired as recently as Friday night. Tom Barlow and Billy Gordon, who welcomed me into the Park Credit Rock and Roll scene, one of the most live, alive uh, sport, uh, uh, musical entertainment scenes in all of the GTA. Suzanne last year and Elizabeth a couple of years ago, who lifted my soul with their classic violin and classic piano playing. To hear people that can play their classical music that well lifts your spirit. And David O'Hearn and Samantha, Stephanie B and many others who could always get me up dancing. Mm -hmm. David and the others, thank you so much. And finally, and probably most importantly, many of you who served as Mac ambassadors, as attendees at Mac events who bought tickets, attended several of my speeches, came to the Marty's, came to the galas, came to the arts festival events, and truly became and made Mac a community. Thank you for your participation in the Mac community. You made these seven years, seven of the most wonderful years of my life. It's very bittersweet for me leaving Mac, but Friday, Patty and Jackie and some of you were in the audience spoke to me through their music, and it's interesting how people can speak to you through their music. Please let me finish with this, and Steve, I apologize, I've got to say it, Steve didn't want me to read you, he wanted me to sing it, I can't sing it, you're going to thank that I don't sing it. No complaints and no regrets. 
I still believe in chasing dreams and placing bets, but I have learned that all you get is what you've given. So give it, give it all you've got. I had my share, I drank my fill, and even though I'm satisfied, I'm hungry still to see what's down another road beyond the hill and do it all again. So here's to life and every joy it brings, to dreamers and their dreams. Here's to life, here's to love, and here's to all of you. Thank you all very much for seven great years of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.